Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 149. I really like my tea with a little lime, and I am your host and podcast commander, Joseph Martin, joined by... Hi, I'm Anna Bernarski, and I really like tea, and I keep talking about it, and Joe's upset. <laughs> I was, uh, well, I, I am Alex the Jedi Jed Razak, but I was quite reminded of uh, the early days of the Game of Cola podcast where we would sit around and talk about tea. Did you actually sit around and talk about tea? Yeah, I know the, you didn't talk about video games. There there are <laughs> several episodes of like Paul and me going on about constant comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone wants to know what I'm drinking right now, it is Celestial Seasonings Peppermint Tea. I was just uh, talking about my discovery of how to make royal milk tea at home. <laughs> And that's our video game podcast, everyone. Thanks for so, coming. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's time to talk about video games, guys. We have to talk about video games. We've been doing this for 149 episodes. You would think we would have gotten it by now, but we have to talk about video games. And you know what's a video game that we can talk about? What? Windows 95. That's not a video game, Jetty, but good energy. It's <laughs> Super Mario Party. Now... You may think, wait a minute, Joseph Martin, host of the Game Cola podcast, podcast commander. Yeah. Super Mario Party came out like three years ago. Oh my god, it's already been three years. Or two years. and a half. Oh jeez. It, it was 2018. <laughs> I think it might have been fall 2018. Yeah. But it was 2018. I did look this up. Why are you talking about this video game? Well, friends, in an inexplicable move... Nintendo has updated Super Mario Party to have the full multiplayer experience that everybody wanted it to have originally. Feelings are mixed because on the one hand, it's a thing that people wanted. On the other hand, it's been two and a half years. On the other other hand, Nintendo's internet doesn't always work very well for these <laughs> sorts of things. So how are we supposed to feel about this emotionally? And I open it up to our uh, lovely co-hosts to answer this question for us. So um, I don't exactly love Mario Party. Uh, I do not own it. And I will play it under very, uh, very certain circumstances. Excruciating <laughs> circumstances. Yes. Um, previous uh, staff member, uh, Coley Kabala. Um <laughs> has been known to pick very very long games <laughs> with our friend Sarah and the two of them are very competitive and I'm just here to vibe <laughs> <laughs> um but this also feels like a weird i like a weird thing to do two and a half years later i just i don't know it, it just feels weird to me well, i was going to say that um it's kind of uh nintendo's uh method of operation over here to uh <laughs> make a thing and then later come out with a new version of the thing that's actually what everyone thought it was going to be to begin with yes <laughs> like such as uh <laughs> the wii motion plus <laughs> perhaps <laughs> <laughs> that's a good example yeah um um, I would argue, to a certain extent, maybe even Pokemon Sword and Shield with the DLC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was another one. That's, I mean, that's Nintendo adjacent, but a similar principle. Yeah. I'm trying to think of another. Can you think of another? There's probably others. We can look them up later and edit them into the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. In Mario Maker 2, was that the one where it was also, like, weirdly done like you either... yeah you at first you could only play with strangers right <laughs> and then they did update it so that you could play with friends later right that's right yeah. um and this that's is the, this is the opposite because in super mario party you're only allowed to play with friends you're not allowed to play with strangers mm -hmm. which like of the two sort of versions that you could get is definitely the better one right yeah. <laughs> i don't know if i want to play mario party with complete strangers especially because like the classic Mario Party thing is, oh my gosh, please press A, it's your turn now. Or, your turn didn't actually end, please press A. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't need to hate strangers that much for Mario Party reasons. Yeah, as highlighted in episode 129 of the Game Cold Podcast, or was it 126? I just listened to it. <laughs> um, it was the one that was about Super Mario Party when it came out. Um, somewhere in the 20s. I think it's 126. Mario Party is about making you hate your friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Because it is necess strictly necessary so you don't actually hate the video game. Right. Um, so playing with strangers, I feel like, would not work. I'm interested to see how much of a revitalization this ends up being. And maybe people listening to this podcast in the future will be able to laugh at us in our ignorance. But, like, I don't know. I have a hard time seeing necessarily a big uptick in this. It feels like Super Mario Party kind of got played out. Yeah. Pardon the partial pun <laughs> there. Um, but, like... There isn't a whole lot of content. Like, they're not adding new boards. They're not adding new characters. They're not, as far as I can tell, adding any new features. So, like, if you kind of got your fill of Super Mario Party, I don't know if being able to play it with friends online is going to be that much of a pull to bring you back. It may get more people in. And, like, Super Mario Party sold really well. Like, it is up there in the list of, like, the top-selling Switch games. It's in the top ten. So, and it, and it had like a steady, it's had a steady adoption rate too. Um, I think it passed Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee a little while back. Um, I would have better analysis if Nintendo would <laughs> release their first quarter analysis spreadsheets. <laughs> Nintendo, Joe's but waiting. Stonks. I need to update my charts. <laughs> All the video game companies need to let me update my charts. Has Mega Man 11 finally outsold Battle Network 4 yet? <laughs> I want to know. The information is out there and they just won't tell me. The truth is out there. It is. I am. Um... They're legally obligated to tell me this in case I wanted to invest in Capcom or Nintendo, but they don't. Anyway. Um, you can sick the SEC on them. I guess here's here's somewhere we can go with this because I think that the end of this question or this idea is that's kind of weird, isn't it? So I feel like what we're really just saying here is that it's a weird internet thing that Nintendo's doing. I don't know if there's much more meat on that bone. Bone meat? That's your that's your cue. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Cue yes. Cue. So so as we were discussing about Nintendo's Super Mario Party, not Mario Party, but Super Mario Party, uh, mm -hmm. for the Super Nintendo Switch, um, is it, <laughs> uh, it's reminding me of uh, a discussion we were having on a, a recent podcast uh, about indie games, where I was complaining that so many indie game developers, rather than making another fun and exciting game, just continued to like add DLC to their existing game because it was popular. They're like, if you right, right, right. If you if you have one breakout game. And then you go go back like five years later and you're like, wow, what else has this developer done? It is literally just they've had minor updates to the game and they also released the game on PlayStation 4 and it's coming out on PlayStation 5 and please buy it on the eShop or whatever. Um, and I feel like this is Nintendo's version of that is, hey, remember that game that we made? Well, we put a minimum amount of effort into updating it. Please go buy it again. I mean, I guess if you already have it. <laughs> Yeah, the difference there is that you can't, like, resell it. Like, I think with a lot of indie games, the constant updates also sort of give it brand awareness for other platforms so that people will buy it multiple times or buy it for their preferred platform. Yeah. Whereas, I don't know how much this is going to move new units. I mean, I feel like there is a contingent of people who specifically didn't buy it because it didn't have this feature. Yeah. But I don't know if this pull is is soon enough to, to actually like grab them is this information going to reach people that don't have a video game podcast where they talk about video <laughs> game news and discussion and i i think the answer is a lot for a lot of people no but maybe they're counting on like a big like video media push of people doing like live streams and videos playing online with their friends and sort of advertising it which we may or may not do depending on how good it is like <laughs> if the internet works or not there's a couple people who own Super Mario Party on the Game Cola podcast or in the Game Cola space. So, I don't know. The question I was thinking of was, like, are there any games that you think could benefit from a 
addition or significant improvement to their online experiences. Like Super Mario Party, right? Super Mario Party had online stuff, but it was bad, and everybody had a really <laughs> concrete <laughs> idea of what a good version of it would be. Yeah. Are there any other games that you feel like have that? Weren't we talking about how um, Luigi's Mansion, when you want to play multiplayer, you can't actually just like play the core game; you play like weird mini games. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> one of them. Whereas, like, you would kind of wish that you could do like real two-player. Yeah in that in that thing yeah like yeah that's 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 a good option and it doesn't even have to be necessarily uh you know the the full story mode it could just be ghost hunting in general but like there is like a ghost hunting uh mini game but it's like get as many ghosts as you can in five minutes in in a randomized thing that's kind of like difficult to navigate (laughs) it's like well how about we just go through regular levels and have fun without a weird timer and like a weird competition mode can i have Mm co-op gameplay (laughs) the thing i was thinking of is like in pokemon sword and shield you have the wild area and if you turn on the internet you see like all of these people who supposedly represent like real people yeah kind of running around but you can't do anything yeah or interact with them in any way and they might as well be like fake right yeah, like yeah, it yeah. might as well just be a visual effect yeah but that just tanks performance <laughs> and it, it just seems like you could have done a thing where it's like you know like what is it uh in diamond and pearl you could go into like the underground and like run around to the same sort of space with your friends. Like even like even if you can't really do a whole lot, yeah. just both of you being able to be in the wild area or like a set of four to eight people being able to be in the wild area and just sort of run around and do stuff. Um and you could just like, you know, if you run into a Pokemon wild Pokemon battle, maybe you do like a uh, a little like animation that's like showing you like kinda like in a power stance, but going back and forth with the <laughs> Pokeball. And it's like, oh, they're in a battle. We can't do anything right now. <laughs> um, but then you could all, like, gather around the same, like, Dynamax spot. And, like, I don't know, just feel like you were there. <laughs> instead of just this weird thing where it's just like, I'm surrounded by strangers that may as well not even be here. Yeah, like weird ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Get to see someone zip by on their bike or whatever. It feels like those IO games where it's like, this is an internet game, but like, it's just, you're just playing against computer players. Yeah. There's no actual internet connection that's all bots. And if you turn (laughs) off the internet, it'll still work because there's no actual real humans. Yeah. But they just want you to think that there's real humans. That's what it feels like. Yeah. What about you, Anna? Do you want internet in your Deponia games? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I don't, I don't play enough, uh especially on my switch i don't play enough um cooperative games or games that require more than one person um except stardew valley but i really just do not like the multiplayer for stardew valley for some reason i just can't do it for very long at least it it, there's i feel like there's a it can be fun but it's also like the sort of well one of the things is like how the clock doesn't stop Mm -hmm. during like cutscenes and stuff so it's kind of like Right, when you're doing a day in Stardew Valley, there is a time limit, but you can kind of go at your own pace. But, like, because you lose the time that, you're like, oh, you're spending time in menus and you're spending time in cutscenes. Yep. Like, it feels a lot more frantic because you technically have less time to do things. And I guess it sort of balances out because you have more people doing things. Right. But, yeah, there's a little more of an urgency when you play multiplayer that kind of messes with maybe the single player vibe. Yeah. Nintendo Switch Online internet has been pretty good for us, though, right, Jay? Like, on the family game night? Yeah. Like, you haven't had any trouble with that, have you? No, um, I'm trying to remember. There was something we were playing where, like, you skipped around a little bit, um, but that was, like, the worst of it, is that, for the most part, it's uh, really good. And I guess, like, if you have a slight internet connection issue, there will be uh, weird glitchiness. But, um, but no, I've been very... Uh, I guess I've been a little surprised at the uh, how responsive it is, you know, like yeah. being that it has to go out of my computer to the server and then back to me. Um, I would expect there to be some amount of lag, <laughs> you know, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, it, it's been 
uh, surprisingly good. Anna, do you have Nintendo Switch Online or the SNES? Yes. Like the the games? I do. All right, here's a question for the studio podcast co-host. I was going to say audience, but Mm. you're not the audience. The people listening are the audience. Yes. So you could be the audience later if you want to go back and listen to this when it comes up. Yeah. But uh, what... How much of the free Nintendo Switch online games, like the NES and the SNES library, how many of those games do you think you've played? I haven't really played any. I think I've tried, but I'm so disappointed that Earthbound's not on it that I just Mm -hmm. gave up. Um, (laughs) No, I just, I forget about it because I'm either playing Animal Crossing or something else. I just bought um, the Bioshock collection oh uh, yeah so that kind of keeps popping up instead of any other like anything else uh the last time i played the nes it was what it eh, it was when um friend of the family's kid who also made fun of me for playing stardew valley <laughs> is this the, the same that kid. sad kid that's sad <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks um yeah it is a fun fact that kid's uncle is my boss now so <laughs> Just gonna tell me like, hey, do you know what your nephew said to me mm-hmm. <laughs> like three years ago? Um, uh, the last time I played was we played like some of the sports games for the NES. And that was that's like the last time I played any of them. Smash tennis. And was that sad? It wasn't my favorite. I don't <laughs> love the sports games on the NES. Believe it or not, it's not what I'm here for. I just, I, I, I think my brain is just so hard set on being like, I don't want to play any of these. I just want to play Earthbound. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't go anywhere near it. Not even the ones that I want to play. Jetty, for someone who some of these games are more contemporary to your video game experience, do you find any draw to them? Or are you like, I've played these, like, I'm good. Yeah, I guess it is funny is um I've looked at it a couple of times and... There are games that I'm like, wow, they have that. And it's like, oh, wait, but I also have that, <laughs> you, you know, and like, w- w- which am I going to play? I mean, it is convenient. It is nice. Uh, you know, they do have save states and so on. But like, And rewind. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, so does my retro freak. So it's like, mm-hmm. which am I going to choose to play it on? Um, and there's no reason specifically to play it on the switch like uh, i was looking through the list and like thinking about playing a few of them but i literally was just like oh well how about instead of you know playing it on the switch i just you know actually play the game um (laughs) yeah and then i get it on the you know appropriate architecture and on the appropriate screen which uh as we've discussed previously on the podcast uh actually i guess we didn't talk about that so much on the podcast that was more of uh james and i talking in the discord but um Mm -hmm. yeah playing on the appropriate screen is uh part of the deal for me yeah jetty's been on a big kick of video input output (laughs) yeah conversion yes um although what was it yeah, and, and I was the one that was arguing to have the CRT filter on what we played <laughs> Switch Online yeah. games. <laughs> you don't get it, the little sparkle, it's supposed to look cooler. It looks cooler <laughs> with the filter on. But does the CRT filter really, like, show that off? I feel like the CRT filter doesn't do a good job of, like, really emulating what that was supposed to look like. Yeah, I mean, it's better than straight pixels. <laughs> See, for me, retro games have always been like straight pixels. Yeah, I like. I don't. I haven't really played. I mean, I played. I definitely played GameCube on CRT, but I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I think I've mentioned before that I remember when I first started like emulating games on the computer that I was like, "There's something wrong with these graphics. They're all square." <laughs> <laughs> that's not what it looks like at all. How the world has changed in the last. Do you find? Years that like there are certain things like that that make you just unable to play the game like i don't know i feel like i have a pretty high tolerance for like weird aspect ratios and (laughs) frame rates and colors and and I, i don't like a lot of the like upscaling filters that you see 
Like, I don't know. In the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, there's, like, this weird thing where it's, like, I don't know if it's supposed to try to emulate CRT, <laughs> but it just makes all the pixels look squishy. Yeah. Um, I don't I, I don't understand what that's supposed to... Like, it doesn't look like a CRT. It just looks like the pixels... It looks like it looks like you dra- went into like a paint program and like dragged an image, and instead of like just keeping the pixels pixel shaped, it like dithered them out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like that doesn't look good. Yeah. No, I mean like I'm not some purist. I'm not gonna say like oh I can't play this game because it doesn't look like a CRT screen, and like simultaneously I'm also not gonna say like if it's not pixel perfect, I'm not gonna play it. Um, there was. What was it? I was playing the Nintendo Switch version of one of the Final Fantasies. I think I was playing Final Fantasy IX. And, like, that was weird and, like, unsettling. Is that, like, the background textures were still what they were originally. But the, mm. but the models, like, I, you can't call them, like, high def. They kept the same, like, polygon count but that, like, they don't fit on the screen because of the higher resolution. So the backgrounds look, like, extra weird and distorted, and the characters look extra sharp. Yeah. You know? Um, Yeah. So, like, when everything was in, uh, you know, 240i or whatever (laughs) um, back on the PlayStation, (laughs) and you're looking at it on a CRT screen, it looks fine. But looking at it on, you know, uh, an LCD screen where the textures are still uh, low def SD. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little not perhaps optimal. That's the content that the people come here for, to hear me say (laughs) not perhaps optimal. Yeah, those are the things that people want to hear us talk about video games. (laughs) A PlayStation game on the Nintendo Switch. (laughs) Um, do, is anybody, just a quick check-in, is anybody interested in any PlayStation or Xbox stuff coming out in the f- near future? I have no money. <laughs> a good point. <laughs> I just, got, I just got a medical bill today and I was like, mm. <laughs> Can I trade this in for an Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> I just take it, my bill from the Cleveland Clinic, just be like, here. This is about the same amount as an <laughs> Xbox. Can I just have an Xbox instead of my health? <laughs> no, I I would I would go for a PlayStation if that were the case. I don't have anything against Xbox. I just see more PlayStation stuff that I'd like to play instead. Yeah. Oh, there there was the one PlayStation thing where they were going to take down the PlayStation like three and PSP store, and, then yeah. that didn't and everybody got happen? upset. And then they said, okay, okay, we're not going to. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering about that. Um, yeah. John told me about it because he's like, there's a bunch of Mega Man Legends games and it's like the only way to get Mega Man Legends. It doesn't cost a hundred dollars per game. Oof. It's like, good to know. Thank you. I'm still holding out for a, a Legends collection. Mega Man's been doing, I mean, like after they did the Zero ZX collection, which like, regardless of what you think of the quality of the games, they were not super popular. At the time of release, Game Cola did do reviews of them. <laughs> um, well, but like Battle Network was just at the top of charts. It had its own TV show. It the fourth Battle Network game was the second most uh, well-selling video game in the Mega Man series, and maybe still to this day, or we'll see once Capcom releases their first quarter analysis spreadsheets. <laughs> hey, Capcom. I need the. I need it. I need it. Give. But like, there's still plenty of Mega Man collections that could come out, right? There's, there's Battle Network, which could be one or two collections, because there's six games, but there's also a lot of spin-offy stuff that they might want to squeeze around. Um, and then there's the Legends series, and then there's Star Force. So there's there's still a pretty deep well there. I think that's all of them. Oh, and then the Game Boy games. They could do the Game Boy games too. Um, that would be a fun collection. They've already ported the Game Boy games, and they've ported Battle Network. I think it was on, you could get it on 3DS eShop. And then they've ported Legends to the PS3 and PSP, which is a little bit old. I don't know how useful those would be. 
But like, I feel like you know, Battle Network sold more than Zero and ZX by far. So you'd think that that would be next on the pecking order. And you'd think it'd be first on the pecking order. Um, but it's more similar to the Mega Man X games that they did the, the collections for before. So it sort of follows that thread a little bit. So I could see that. But yeah, are there any... Here's a question. Here's a question that we can talk about on this video game news and discussion podcast, <laughs> friends. Um, are there any... There's a lot of collections coming out in general. Like games sort of being moved to new systems. Like, Anne, you were playing the... You bought the Bioshock one, right? Yes. That's what you said before. Yeah. Are there any collections that don't exist that you would want? I'd like a Deponia collection of the original trilogy. I bought the first game on the Switch, and it cost a lot more than I think it should have. So I was hoping it was going to be the collection, but it wasn't. And um, I would like that a lot. I'm trying to think of what other games exist. <laughs> I don't know what they Jenny, what about you while Anne is thinking about video games? So actually, um, a couple of things about that. I don't know if there's like specifically a game collection that I would be, you know, psyched about or whatever. Um, but we were talking about, like, graphically, what's something that I would never play. And I have to say, mm -hmm. any, uh, like, just thinking about it makes me shudder. <laughs> Is like, they, like, re-released, like, the Dragon Warrior games... Or, like, uh, I think there's, like, a Secret of Mana that they released for, like, the iPhone. Oh, oh, yeah, I think I know that one. And it's, like, they they got, like, an intern to redo all the pixel art or something. <laughs> like, they, mm. like... But, like, as 3D models, right? No, well, no, I, no, sorry, I'm not even talking about that 3D remake. That, like, that I'm fine with. But what I hate is the disgusting, like... A uh, mishmash of like, oh, it's quote pixel art, but it's just like some redrawn, uh, like it's not, it's not pixel art, and they're not really trying for pixel art. They're just trying to have like weird art. It's really gross looking. I don't know. Like it reminds me of like something you would see on RPG Maker, which like oh, oh know... yeah, I I see this. It looks like fan art, but it's just like. Yeah directly adjacent to like the original snes art yeah yeah and it's like why like just reuse the original art like i get that like i guess you're trying to like make it look cooler for the new generation but like instead it just looks ugly <laughs> like it just like i don't know it bugs me i guess actually the secret of mana one doesn't look terrible the um the dragon warrior ones definitely just look hideous um, but like, I guess there's also something that bugs me about like the weird on screen buttons and stuff like the, if they, if they made the GUI look the way that the rest of the game looks like it actually fit with the game, the, like the text box and the like, uh, button indicators actually looked remotely like they were part of the game. Mm -hmm. maybe i would like it a bit better but yeah like that's something that purely for graphical reasons i would never want to play well that it's interesting because like i'm thinking of the Mega Man zero collection which is a source port which my understanding is is that they like rebuilt the game sort of from the source code so it's not being emulated it's it's working on this like the switch hardware or the computer hardware or whatever you're playing it on yeah um, but in it, they added this thing um, called, because the Zero games, especially the first one, are not well balanced in difficulty. Um, the first one, I have said many times, has one of the worst live <laughs> systems I've ever seen in a video game. Um, and so they added these uh, save assist things, where it basically puts in checkpoints. You, you pass it, and you can load from it. You can only have one in there. It sort of like makes a save state um anytime you touch it and like you know it takes a little while before you can hit the same one again yeah but like so you can do it and so if you get to a boss you fight the same boss um and if you die like you go back to where you were but you have like your health back so it sort of acts like a checkpoint but like they so it has this little graphic that represents <laughs> the save point 
And you can tell that they spent a good amount of time designing this so that it would look appropriate in all six of the games yeah. that it's for. Like, it, especially in the Z, I think it was most well fits in the Game Boy Advance Zero games, but I think it still looks fine in the ZX games. But, like, they made this object that doesn't exist in the original games, but they try to make it fit as seamlessly into the these new games as possible and that's one of the other things i think about with like collections like that is like stuff where they could add other things to it beyond just like a port right <laughs> so like like with the, one of the things that they did in the Mega Man x series is like you can play on like i don't know what they call it maverick hunter mode or like or like super mode but like basically you can play through the game with like taking very little damage or like having all the all the power-ups from the beginning um so it's very it's very easy <laughs> um it's basically almost like a story mode for some of them yeah um but like that's been built into it where a port wouldn't necessarily have something like that so that's the other sort of dimension to having a collection all oh, right yeah um the other thing that the collection does that i like about the zero collection is like some of the for the games that were on the ds some of them had this like cross function compatibility with the zero game boy games because remember the ds and the ds Lite, you could put a game boy game in <laughs> and a ds game at the same time and sometimes that would do stuff yeah and so they like added like that in sort of like you could say tell the system to pretend that zero three is in the game boy slot or tell it that zero four is in the game boy <laughs> slot um and then you could get those features so like that's another thing that a collection can do yeah so it also gives you the e-reader content you can unlock the e-reader <laughs> content because like who i mean i have an e-reader but i don't have any cards for it like that's just weirdly selective Bar oh i think a lot of it was japan exclusive anyway barcode boy like japan exclusive e-reader content and did you think about any other video games I'd like to see a mother collection. Um, <laughs> I've only ever played Earthbound. I would like to try the other games. I know a lot of people really love Mother 3. I've just never played it because it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to look at my Switch to see if there are any other games. Um, and then I, I think Steam is still... Oh, no, Steam's still open. I can actually look. If something were to come to Switch... Yeah, I think the original Deponia trilogy is definitely up there, um, but I probably would enjoy playing it on PC better, so that would be probably hit or miss for me anyway. I don't know. I don't have a lot of games that I think would make a great, huge impact, unless it's probably like a bigger thing, like like uh, the Pokemon main series or like Zelda games or Mario or something. Which would be fine, but that it feels very, not like a cop out answer, but like I, I feel like anyone would pretty much be like, oh yeah, that'd be cool, I guess. Yeah, I could see a new Super Mario Brothers like collection, yeah. like the two, like the DS game, the 3DS game, the Wii game, and the Wii U game. Yeah. Sort of all in one thing. Maybe you could play with like updated like i i would wonder if like maybe you could play with updated models because like all the graphics in the handhelds are like 3d but like so so you're saying are they, are they rendered like could it, is it can you ever see like some of those remasters where it's like stuff was recorded at a higher resolution than it ended up being shown <laughs> but like now that we have the technology to do it you can actually <laughs> see it like those wide. what i think what there's like these widescreen editions of eve of not uh what malcolm in the middle or something <laughs> where like you can see the stand-in doubles <laughs> like that aren't actually the characters yeah because it was originally cut for not widescreen so that their face was out of frame yeah oh, that's funny oh wow or just generally something like that Jeez. yeah stuff that was shot on film and then played on TV, and it was only available right. on VHS until now, and now you get all the detail that you didn't uh, mm -hmm. realize actually just makes it look cheap. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's fun. <laughs> but but I, I, well, I was also going to say, uh, so Joseph, what you want is a Super Mario Bros. collection that is new, not a new Super <laughs> Mario Brothers collection. 
a new new Super Mario Brothers collection. Yes. A new game, which is a new Super Mario Brothers collection. A collection of the video games known under the title <laughs> as New Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> now featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series with new funky mode. Mode. Yes. <laughs> Martin Joseph says we are not getting sued. Anna, were you there for that? I don't think I was, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, you should watch the Game Cola Family Game. Oh, right, because I shared all it. These fun references. Yep. Sorry, I forgot. And also the Game Cola Discord, <laughs> where Jetty showed it off. Yeah, I forgot um, that I shared. I guys, it. I think, you know what? I think we've done it. We've spent enough time <laughs> talking about video games. Oh, thank okay. God. So you know what it's time More for. More tea talk, thanks, Joe. Uh, well, I was going to say talking about visual content that we're not showing because this is not a visual medium. Also that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another <laughs> another important staple of the Game Cola podcast, but perhaps an even more fundamental staple is the video games that we've been playing in recent times. Oh. I tricked you. You thought we weren't going to talk about video games anymore on this video game podcast, but you were fooled. I, was. I don't want to talk about video games anymore but well, i guess jetty can go oh <laughs> never mind <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> i'm talking about video games first <laughs> take it away everyone gets to deal with it uh i've i've really just been playing sims and animal crossing for the most part but i've also been playing stardew valley again which i have not touched since Animal Crossing came out, and I just started a new game recently. Um, I am in winter. I am currently playing, so I am on uh, Monday the 15th of winter. And <laughs> wow. uh, I am dating Sebastian. Cause uh, I made, watch out for Diana. Because I made a uh, goth-ish looking character. Goth farmer. A goth farmer. The, so the the classic, the <laughs> classic <laughs> look. Goth farmer. Of goth farmer. Uh, yeah, I made a goth farmer. So uh, I was just like, yeah, might as well, because he's one of the ones I haven't gone for yet. I haven't really seen a lot of the new content yet. Uh, the most that I've seen is stuff of that within like the last year. Uh, but none of the stuff that was added very recently. The other game I've been playing, aside from. Bioshock, I don't have too much to say on that. This is my first time playing Bioshock, and I'm not very good at it, especially not on my <laughs> tiny Switch screen. I have to play it probably on my TV. But uh, the other song... Oh, song. The other game I've been playing is called Wander Song. Um, I watched some people play it on YouTube, and I thought it was really cute. Um, you're playing this bard who has a dream at the very beginning about uh, trying to fight a monster with a sword and it doesn't work. Um, the sword is way too heavy and all you can do is sing. So you sing at it and a little ghost spirit girl <laughs> is just like, oh, you're so cute. You're not the hero. And then you wake up and you're like, what? <laughs> and then the entire game is you trying to kind of save the world whereas the hero is supposed to be defeating different i forget what they call them but they're like technically the gods quote unquote of the world so that the goddess who made the entire universe can destroy this one and start a new one because <laughs> this one's time is running out uh so that's the plot and i'm having a great time there's a lot of platforming which i don't usually love but there's a lot of fun mechanics with the singing with like making things move and singing songs and having to do different like different things for learning this song to save the universe and it, it's a cute game i like it a lot and i also I, I like bards that's my secondary after rogues is bards so love it and that, what is that you are you playing it on pc or switch? i am playing it on switch i have it for both pc and switch i'm having an easier time with the switch because the singing kind of has to be controlled by a joystick. If you try to use direction like a D-pad, it doesn't work as well because it won't register you pushing in two at the same time to get like the diagonal. It's also a little fidgety, mm. so I have a few problems with the game, but I can probably talk about that 
whenever I'm on the podcast next. If I finish it. Once you once you finish the game. If I finish it. If I don't. Once you have finished playing the game. If I forget. Perhaps is a way to phrase it. If I finish the game. Because, man, video games are a time. And I don't know. Emphasis on time. <laughs> <laughs> the time is a thing that is slowly running out for all of us. I've also been playing video games in the limited amount of time I have on this planet Earth. <laughs> uh, I, after like doing all the family game nights, I've been kind of dipping into the NES and SNES library, tried out a couple things. Uh, I was stuck on uh, Mario's Picross for a while. There's a lot of Picross boards in that <laughs> game, you guys. It keeps like doing more and doing more, and like every time, I'm like, well, I finally done the last Picross board on the Mario section. It's like, nope, Surprise. here's three more levels, each with like fifteen boards, oh, wow. or maybe twelve. So yeah, and they're like twenty. I think I just got to the ones that are like twenty by twenty. That's pretty big, which is a lot. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it started to hurt my brain a little bit because mm. the these things will take like twenty minutes. Oof. Yeah. Um, but it is fun. Like it has sort of two modes. Like it has one where like you're on a t- thirty minute timer, but then any time that you like knock out a wrong, it Picross is it's also known as paint by numbers. Um, and so basically you're given a grid of tiles, and then on each of the rows and columns it tells you like how many tiles uh are to be broken on that row or column. And so like if it's one and one, then you know okay, well if I have one hit. It can't be any of the ones next to it if it's two ones, because then that would become a two. Yeah. If that sort of makes sense. If you look up paint by numbers, <laughs> it's it's pretty straightforward. It's like a more straightforward Sudoku. <laughs> so if there's a version where like if you hit the wrong thing, if you hit a peg that isn't supposed to be hit, um, then you like lose a couple minutes and you lose more time each for each of the mistakes that you make. Um, and then there's another version where like you're on an increasing timer. But the game will not tell you if you made a mistake. So if you go through the whole thing and then you knock out the thing that you think is the last tile and it doesn't like finish, like it doesn't do the, (laughs) and here's what the image is. And you're just sitting there and it's like, well, I guess I have to start over then. (laughs) You can, sometimes you can try to work out like the mistake you made, but a lot of times it's just like, I guess I'm just doing all of that again (laughs) because clearly I made a mistake somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's also funny, it's it's one of the, and this is the case for a lot of these SNES and NES online games, um, a lot of them are just only in Japanese. Oh, yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's funny, like, on the, the Picross one, like, every time the picture reveals, it'll say something. And, like, sometimes it's like, oh, it's a Japanese word. And, but, like, most of the time, it's just an English word in katakana. Yeah. Oh. And it's like this would have been one of the easiest things to translate. <laughs> like most of these words are already English words. Yeah. My favorite was one where it was like glasses, so it's megane. But then like the like two later, it's like, oh, opera glasses. And so that must be like I don't know, maybe whatever the Japanese word for opera is, or maybe it's opera megane or megane no opera or something, and it's just like opule. Apula gulas. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, literally just opera glass. Mm hmm. Um, let's see, what else? I tried a bit of uh, Panel de Pong, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Is that the one yeah. with Lip the Fairy? Um, I tried to get better at that so that I could fight Jetty in it. <laughs> um, but again, also all in Japanese. And I don't know if I really got the hang of it. Most of the time, I did the story mode, but most of the time when I beat a level, it was just because I accidentally got like a six layer combo (laughs) that I didn't mean to. What else did I play? Those are the two main ones that I tried. That's most of what I, oh, I also tried the Monster Hunter demo, but it was a little overwhelming. So that's when I ended up playing Picross instead. (laughs) Oh, because I did a Nuzlocke. And I think I talked about this on the last podcast, but I finished a Nuzlocke. I posted about it on the Discord. But I think I finished a Fire Red Nuzlocke. I did finish it. I'm trying to remember what Pokemon I had at the end. I had uh, a Magneton, a Blastoise, uh, a Dodrio. There was a Haunter, who was the only oh, one who yeah. ended up dying in the in the Elite Four, which was appropriate. <laughs> um, Spooky. Oh, I had a Jolteon. That's right. I don't remember the last one. I think I mostly used um, 
Magneton and Haunter because they had so many immunities. Right, Magneton resists poison. And then Haunter resists normal fighting. And because it has levitate, it also resists ground. So there's just a lot of Pokemon that just can't do any damage to Haunter. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's I think, a pretty good summary of the video games that I've been playing in recent times. I may try Monster Hunter again. I, I only went through, like, one real fight. And so maybe I wish, I think I used the Sword and Shield. And maybe it'll be more fun with a different weapon set. I just haven't dipped back into it yet. Jetty, what video games have you been playing in recent times? Um, so just, uh, immediately before getting on the podcast, um, I was wrapping up Return of the Obra Dinn, um, if anyone remembers mm-hmm. that classic award winner. Yeah, it's got a very distinct artistic style that I think you would recognize if you've ever seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... It's probably come across your visual dashboard in, like, one of the indie conferences somewhere, because it, it got ported to a lot of stuff. yeah. Um, I think it is available on the Switch, um, but my brother bought it for me on Steam because he enjoyed it, um, and so I finally got around to playing it. And basically, it was one of those, oh, hey, when did it get to be 2 a.m. Uh, oh, games? good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, here I thought, oh, I don't know, I mean, it's late, but it's not too late. I'll go ahead and start this game. I can probably wrap it up, uh, not expecting that I was supposed to uh, solve the mystery of what happened to 60 individual people. Yes. <laughs> um, are either of you familiar with the game, like the actual gameplay? I, Yeah, I am, but you may still want to go through it for our listeners who might not be. Cam's yeah. explained a little bit to me, so I know vaguely. Yeah. Um, like, I want to play it myself one day. Yeah, uh, I would definitely suggest it. Um, although, well, I'll get there. Um, <laughs> so... So yeah, basically, uh, you are a uh, detective hired by an insurance company to figure out what happened to this uh, boat that disappeared, and uh, you are given this uh, pocket watch that allows you uh, to view the moment of death of uh, anyone you encounter on board, and so you walk around finding corpses basically on the boat, and then trying to determine what happened to everyone by the few corpses that you do see so like you know there will be this like wild scene of uh you know they're getting attacked by some sort of uh tentacle beast and uh obviously this guy is currently dying um but there's also like people in the distance who you can see are like uh falling off the boat or there's like another guy who's uh already dead but you don't know how he died yet uh but you can go over to him and then jump into his moment of death and then find out that like oh it was somebody else was getting shot and so on and just like uh you try to figure out uh what happened to each individual some of the people escaped um you know some people died sort of off camera um and it was uh a fun and exciting adventure i enjoyed 99 percent of it and then the last like two hours of the game was me just having like like nine people left and i'm like obviously obviously it's somebody i can see how he died i don't know who he is so i'm just kind of like going through the list you have to you have to solve three in a row correctly and judge who it is and how they died in order to like check them off the list and so it's Mm -hmm. like well i've got something wrong here let me just go and shuffle the names or like this guy i can see he's standing in front of the cannon in this shot and then in the next shot that i get there's a different guy getting blasted by the cannon and the other guy is gone so is it that he died by falling out of the ship? Is it that he died by being crushed by the monster? Is it that he died by being eaten by the monster? Was he drowned by the monster? And so, like, you're just kind of, like, going through the things. It's like, okay, it's been a fun game. But perhaps some of these people could have been a little bit better clued in. <laughs> um, there's also an additional after-the-game chapter that I have yet to complete, but I am excited to uh, begin. Don't let Mike. That's been pretty much what you've been doing this month. Um, I haven't really. Oh, well, yeah. Once again, um, 
instead of playing games, I have been making games. Um, hey. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but is this now? What is this? The O Rock podcast? I was now just. I was just. Games and making. Yeah, games? I was just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to think of how to work that one in there. Um, <laughs> brought to you. <laughs> By Brought to you, brought to you, brought to you. Yeah, um, for the most part, I've been, uh, you know, chugging along at my game engine, which has been going pretty well. Um, I'm very excited. I'm finally getting to that point where, like, so much of the basics are set that it starts to, like, roll along a little faster. There's fewer, like, baseline things to do, um, mm -hmm. and it makes it a little easier to, like, make new stuff and have more things that I can actually see being done. Um, but yeah, I decided to take a little break and then the last like three days, Oberdin has been like all of my spare time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, you figured out how not to make it so that your character can go into debt, right? That was the last update that I saw. Yeah, no, I, I, I managed You're testing out the shop. Yeah, I, I managed to solve that issue. Um, and it, it's one of those things I do always enjoy, uh, where people are like, pfft. I could have made that game in five minutes. And it's like, I don't think you realize what goes into like, okay, sure, let's make a shop. Okay, now you go into the shop. Now let's say that you uh, you go to sell your items, right? Well, now you're sold out of that many items, so it's no longer in your inventory. And now you've sold everything in your inventory, right? Like, you have to make the functionality to remove the item from the shop, then check that you've sold out of everything, close the shop, and send you back to the window that you had before and disable the sell button like these are all things that you have to program yourself like you realize this you don't just like you know quote make the shop there's all the like steps in between of like okay well uh you know what is a menu right how do i get all of the inventory uh, i've got all the inventory they're now menu items but like how do i add and remove them like okay i'm sold out or oh i don't have it enough money anymore so how do i disable that item you know like i don't think people realize a lot of the time what is involved in the creation of their favorite video games jay i think you just missed the create a shop button i'm pretty sure that's <laughs> yeah, there no I, I've... I think it's i think it's actually a, like a command key i think it's just like three like control uh s h p i think is uh is make shop it's it's like a regular mac shortcut to do any basic function yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i i, I think i've had this exact <laughs> discussion with paul franzen before <laughs> i i believe the command that he suggested to me is uh have you tried make game <laughs> <laughs> have you tried running that command yet <laughs> Speaking of Paul and the Oa Rock uh, cameo oh, we yeah. threw out a little earlier, uh, Internet Court came out a little while ago. So if you're a fan of Game Cola stuff, especially older Game Cola stuff, um, but like the general <laughs> sense of humor that Paul sort of all took us under back in the day, um, <laughs> it is. You should definitely check out Internet Court. It features Paul. It features Michael Gray. It features Diana Gray as a prominent character. Yeah. Um, you should definitely check it out. I will. I will say, um, as much as it's you know Paul's game, uh, much of the the comedy therein is very obviously written by Michael Gray. Like it is yes. so. It, <laughs> yes. He has whole like sections about like well actually in the Latin. It's like um, Michael. I know. I know this <laughs> is you. I know this is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a, a full motion video FMV uh, Ace Attorney visual novelish game um, that's really fun, and you should definitely check it out yes. if anything that we've said sounds interesting to you. Um, I don't have any video games to advertise, unfortunately. Anna, do you have any video games to advertise? Um, play that you made. Uh, the playvideogames.com. What? Wow. Um, <laughs> what? You 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 made playvideogames.com? dot <laughs> com? If you think I can make a game, you are so wrong. I've been working. Yeah, but that's not a game. That's a website. That's, yeah. Wow, um, this is a good website. <laughs> have you? Or did you go to yeah, it? Yeah. Get pricing for this domain. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, no, uh, I, I've, uh, on Twitter, I mentioned I want to write a potato dating sim my <laughs> either junior or fr- or junior or senior year of college. Um, are you going to that? Call that was it... about five years ago. <laughs> are you are you going to call it Podato? I forget, but I I remember talking to Paul about it, and it nothing has happened. <laughs> but I can't remember the actual I think name. But... That five years ago, I suggested the name Eye to Eye. Here, all right. <laughs> let me open my Google Docs uh, real quick because I do have the uh, which the I of still the think is very good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I know I have a lot of ego and hubris. That's my whole brand. Yeah. But I think eye to eye is a very good name see. for a potato dating. Where is set. it? Oh my god, where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, Mashmaker. Wow. Uh, Mashmaker is also good. pretty good. I yeah. have. Dater tots. The first. I have the first thing done, and it's uh, if you choose sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> what are, do you have the the different potatoes? Sweet potato, baked potato, like uh, edgy potato, swamp potato. <laughs> Best friend potato and snobby potato. <laughs> Who let me write anything? <laughs> this is so bad. See, I thought it was going to be like baked potato, sweet potato, oh, hash no. browns, just... french fries. Oh. Well, no. Mashed potatoes. No, the thing is, you get a bunch of potatoes for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you get six whole potatoes. For only a dollar. <laughs> and then I have here dumps potatoes unceremoniously onto the counter. <laughs> um, the next line is, huh, I wonder what I should make. Baked potatoes are good, but mashed potatoes are the best. I can decide later. <laughs> Maybe I should check the taters to make sure they aren't all gross. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that before I bought them. <laughs> and then the sweet potato says hello. What? So wait, wait, wait. Is the human dating the potatoes? Yes. <laughs> You're taking. A, I feel like there's a lot of inspiration from Dandelion here. <laughs> well, it's not really dating. It's who's going to share mashed potatoes with you. <laughs> And like, you're gonna wait, so you're, you're gonna, gonna mash all the other ones into mashed potatoes. What? So so the other potatoes don't are not in any of the other storylines because they get mashed yes. in the opening scene. Yes. That's dark. <laughs> also, five potatoes is a lot of mashed potatoes for one person. <laughs> it is a lot. It's of for two potatoes. if one of them is another potato. <laughs> well, how much does one potato eat? How much how much cannibalism is going on? <laughs> oh my god. Does the potato like turn into a person no. potato sort of no. thing, or are they just literally a it's potato? Just a potato. <laughs> Do they like grow mouths? <laughs> yes, they already had mouths. <laughs> they were one whole dollar for six potatoes that talk. <laughs> so. Do the other potatoes just accept their fate? Like, does the the potato that they you save have it. anything <laughs> to say? They don't love this? it. Um, <laughs> um, the best ending, uh, spoiler alert, is, you know, I won't have any problems with talking potatoes if I just eat you. <laughs> and the potatoes all say, oh no. <laughs> And then the best ending is Mash Made in Heaven. <laughs> Art. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying. This is beautiful. <laughs> what? All right. First day that I opened this document was November seventh, twenty sixteen. So. <laughs> So that's my video game coming soon to never. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I wrote sweet potatoes endings, which are uh either good or bad. Um, if you if you add two regular ingredients to them, which means like uh not the sweets that the sweet potato keeps suggesting, 
Yeah. Uh, so like garlic or bacon or chives or something. Um, you get the good ending, which is sweet victory. If you add two plus weird ingredients, uh, you get too sweet, which is the bad ending. <laughs> I, you have to eat it. You murdered my friends for these mashed potatoes, so now you gotta finish them. <laughs> I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I mean, hey, Renpi is out there. Renpi. You got Itch.io. I've said this to Paul before, and he's like, this is amazing. I, was like, I think that's what he said. He could correct me if you, he the problem, The problem is, is that because it's in the story that you bought all these potatoes for a dollar, yeah. you can only charge one dollar for this video game. <laughs> <laughs> this, this game is at least five years in the making at this point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually very fair. Um... So yeah, <laughs> I I don't know how to write dating sims. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not what I expected <laughs> to happen when I jokingly asked <laughs> Anna if there was a video game that she made that she wanted to advertise. Oh yes, God, now we all want to buy her game. Um, please buy my video game that is not coming ever, <laughs> um, unless someone like forces me to sit down and write it which i tried to do to myself but i couldn't do it because i just you you've seen the material that i've already come up with you've heard it i don't know if i could get any better than this one path <laughs> i think this is it i believe in you anna thank you um, maybe this podcast will spur renewed interest yeah in your work oh Oh, um, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> probably not. Uh, abandoned well, projects. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> thank you for listening to the Game Cola podcast and Anna's Potato Corner. <laughs> Anna's Potato and Tea Corner. <laughs> My tea's gone, by the way. It's all I finished it. <laughs> If you liked what you heard, please tweet at Anna to finish her potato video game and uh, follow this podcast on your favorite podcast platforms such as iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, there's also the website GameCola.net where you can read articles about video games. You can also go to the YouTube channel GC.net, the letter G, the letter C, the word dot, the word net. If you want to watch videos and live streams about video games, we've been doing Family Game Night pretty regularly. We've done Jackbox streams. We've done uh, some Nintendo Switch Online uh, stuff like with uh, River City Ransom yeah. and uh, Kirby Golf. Kirby's Dream Course, that's what they call it. <laughs> that's the um, actual title. Yeah, and uh, I think we actually might have some fun Jackbox stuff co in store coming up, or actually, this is maybe just after this podcast, just before, just after. I don't oh, know. We'll oh. probably do Jackbox plenty of times. Hold, it's pretty. Hold on, actually, because um, I my 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 item has shipped, Joseph. Um, I I need to figure out when it's actually arriving. Um, your I what? Oh, your your video input output item yes my my video input output device um because for those who uh missed the last uh family game night i debuted uh my speed run of windows 95 um <laughs> but there were some uh there's some issues there's some limitations in the uh hdmi uh <laughs> video format that uh will not allow me to stream dos <laughs> Uh, and as such, I was unable to play any video games, but I have uh, I, I have the solution. It's in the mail currently, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks I can stream uh, DOS games from my free computer I got on Craigslist. If you like updates on Jetty's adventures with video input and output, be sure to follow us on social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, or Discord. Discord links are all around the website and the podcast description on YouTube and the and all the Twitter description. 
Um, if you want to find Twitter and Facebook, just search Game Cole and you'll find us. Um, and if you really like this podcast, the best thing you can do is tell your friends about the stuff that Game Cola is doing. Um, and leave us nice comments and re- ratings and reviews on whatever platform you use to consume Game Cola material. Those, that's the thing that you can do to help us, your internet friends. But don't form parasocial relationships. That's not healthy. I speak from experience. Thank you for anyway. listening. <laughs> this podcast has been a ride that I wasn't ready for. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this wild ride of a game called <laughs> podcast. Have a wonderful time of day, wherever it is, whenever it is, you are listening to this particular podcast, and we will see you next month. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. I'm sorry. <laughs>